All right, gang. So I thought I would at least film the action where the main action is. This is not covering the whole thing, but I will film what's going on here. So let me explain real quick what has happened already. Um, if you can see my finger, probably not. No, no. So down this way, going, going that way, going that way is Chattanooga. Going that way is Louisville. Like any of that matters. Um, okay, so I said in my little note that I attached to this video that uh, I was executing Rosecrans' plan from the text about the 14th Army Corps. I think I, I, think I got that right. I got, I got saved it on my computer out there. But from the Library of Congress, and it's a very, very detailed uh, study of Rosecrans when he took command out here uh, during this part of the Tennessee campaign. So his plan of battle when he finally took off, of course, you know, the Christmas Eve, yeah, I think it was the 24th, the orders were issued for the, well, they were, I guess they were issued on the 23rd to March on the 24th. And the entire army around Nashville here was up. He had reorganized. Uh, Stanley was in, brought in to be in charge of the cavalry to develop a good cavalry force. Uh, these, it's funny because there's leaders out here in the West I don't know much about, but apparently Stanley is a superstar at being a leader. Apparently every soldier that's under his command loves this guy. He's brave. He's intelligent. He knows what he's doing. So he's put in charge of the cavalry. You've got Crittenden. Thomas and McCook are the three wing commanders. Uh, I think they, I think it, it says there's like around 42,000 uh, active combat troops in the command. Um, from what I remember reading when they start this. So the orders are given that on the 24th, I believe, everybody's up and ready to move. And... They're issued stand-down orders because Rosecrans decides, no, we're not going to go on Christmas Day. That's going to be a day for him, a day of worship, uh, is from, from what I was reading. So this scenario is odd because it covers... Pull it out here. It covers... Oops. Where is it? That's Shiloh. If it covers the Battle of Stones River, that was on New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. So this covers the fighting on, or the campaign on, uh, December 29 and ends January 19th. So this is three turns. Um, no forging. Weather is cold. I rolled for cold weather. That uh, took... The cold weather caused the morale of every organization, every force, to drop one. Well, the Confederates are, have four morales, and the Union has three. Um, so, I'm not sure about how this could be the 29th, because on the 26th is when the Union Army started doing its thing. So, this is actually, you know, one turn sooner I guess it's about three days in a turn I think I'm not sure but anyhow so his plan was a Stanley split up the cavalry which I did not necessarily need to do uh, into three three little wings of their own one was to go towards Franklin ahead of Thomas let me make sure I got that right ahead of Thomas yeah ahead of Thomas okay and to take Franklin and drive any Confederate cavalry out of there, which just happens to be Joe Wheeler, okay? Um, Thomas was to follow him into Franklin. McCook, who is here, no, that's Stanley, sorry. McCook, who is right here, he was to drive on Nolensville and Triune, and engage Hardy. And Crittenden was to drive down the Murfreesboro Pike 
towards Murfreesboro uh, to prepare for to engage Polk uh, in the front of Murfreesboro on the north northwest side. So I said, okay, well, let's do that. And, uh, of course, Granger, you can't see him. He's off over yonder somewhere. He is dealing with, I don't know if you can see him on the board or not. Can we see him? Yeah, well, you can't. But there's a unit over here that's Morgan. Is that John Hunt Morgan, I think, Confederates? Is that who that is? Yeah, John Hunt Morgan, um, who was sent by Bragg to go and try to cut. If you can see Nashville here, the rail line goes back up. He was going to go there and cut that rail line, which he actually did. He was successful at it. And they had Granger trying to deal with him and Wright, and the entire 6th Corps was brought down to deal with them. Um, I was not aware of that. Um, and Nathan Bedford Force was out to the west screwing around with Grant's forces. Um, you can't see it on the on this one, but on the map, but there's a lot... There's a lot of small detachments out here. Of course, the Union detachments are bigger than most of the Confederate cavalry forces. And they've got a naval landing up near Columbus. So, I guess that's, what is that, Columbus, Columbus, Missouri? Columbus, Columbus, Kentucky. Oh, over there in the little fingerprint. All right, so anyhow, so I executed those plans of Rosecrans. Now, here's what happened. Stanley went down. Here he is. And he drove into Wheeler, <laughs> and he failed in his attack declaration. Come on, the guy's got a battle rating of five, and he rolls a freaking six. So he got chased off. His uh, declaration did not work. He had to retreat one hex. So he had moved into Franklin, which... In reality, they've taken it because uh, Wheeler was not in Franklin. He was behind it. So he moved in, had to retreat, didn't even get the battle underway, lost a step, lost a morale point. So he's only got one morale point, and he had to back up. So without even an engagement, the Confederates already have one victory point. Um, then Thomas, he executed his move. He was able to declare attack. Well, uh, Confederate cavalry, well, the Confederates in general in 1862... Um, if they have, so if they have an active leader and they have more cavalry or superior cavalry than the Union side does, they can retreat to one hex with no morale loss and, uh, there's really no penalty for them. And then in 1863 and on, it's just, they can just pretty much do it. So he was able to retreat. Thomas moved forward and took the, the hex there, which really that has no value. So no combat there. Get this out of the way. Um, now the Union, their bid chip, and I do that by dice roll, they bid maximum. So they had to execute everything they could in one impulse. The Confederate bid was two, and they have, I think, four. It's three or four. So they get to, oh boy, where'd I hide those? They get to do two impulses. Here they are. So the Confederates have four, okay. Yeah, so they've got, they get to do two impulses of, of uh, level two, two operations points back to back, okay? So they're gonna get to execute two times, if, if need be. And then we'll go into the administrative segment. Um, so what I at least wanted to do was, let's take a little action right here with the Confederates to see if we can't, Oh, okay, wait, let me finish this up first. Okay, so Thomas was to go to Franklin, and he was to turn back to the east and help Crittenden. McCook was to McCook was to drive uh, Hardy out and then send a division to pursue Hardy if he retreated or they won, and then he was to take the remaining and turn left into towards Murfreesboro while Crittenden was to come down. But you'll see Rosecrans is sitting there inactive. <laughs> he rolled a six in his movement and it because there was more than one commander in there it turned out to be a seven the freaking army the overall commander went inactive so poor old Crittenden underneath him he can't do a detachment to get Crittenden out because you got to execute Rosecrans first uh, now I could have just said detach him burnt the last point that Rosecrans had and sent um, Crittenden out on his own but I wanted to take Rosecrans with him 
Not sure why, because Rosecrans ratings are not that good. So, couldn't think of it. Crittenden is a 3-3-4. Three, three, and, well, yeah, he is. He's a 4-5-3. His movement rating is terrible for Rosecrans. Now he's a 2. So, those plans got foiled. Uh, most of the scatter units that you can't see on the board, like I'm trying to move uh, from Gallatin, I'm trying to move Payne out with his force to get over here and maybe he can deter Morgan. And I'm trying to reposition a lot of the detachments up on the railroad to make sure that uh, Morgan can't just ride right in there and destroy those railroad lines. Um, I do have an engineer somewhere to repair if need be, but this is only, like I said, it's only three turns. All right, so let's do the Confederates. And I think what I want to do is... Since we have caused a disruption in the Union forces, I think what we want to do is we want to hit them. And I think we're going to go after a good old McCook right here, um, who happens to have, yeah, a butt ton of forces. He's got, which I'm not supposed to look at that stuff. That's, I'm cheating. Can't help it. He's got like 24, but um, Polk and Hardy between them, Polk and Hardy, well, that's a, that's the big boss there. That's Bragg. So Polk and Hardy, they have, between them, they have a C. Oh, geez, Polk is, he's a terrible commander, but he's got, he's got eight. 9, 17, and 10. He's got 27. And Hardy has 10, 20, 30. So they got 57 points. So let's go up and see if we can't cause a little havoc with Mr. Uh, McCook up here. All right? Well, and of course the Yanks, they'll get reactionary movement if they can do it. So... But we might as well hit him, right? Take, well, I better check that. Let's make sure, because I don't want to. I don't want to do uh, run into a buzzsaw if I don't need to. Now well, let's see. Let's take a sneak peek here. All right, declaring an attack, movement-related activities, rail movement. No, we're gonna. All right, let's go to. Execution of rack page 16. Let's see who can react. Because if that active leader can't, he might get us a good fight here. I mean, if an inactive leader can't. All right, reaction. Whenever an active leader is within the printed movement rating of a friendly force that is under attack, and both that leader and the hex under attack are within the command range of a leader holding a, a senior command. So, shoot, he's only got... He's only got two, so he would be able to react. All right, well, that's not good. Let's see what we got over here. He's got 12, 9, and 5, so he's got he's got 26 over here. Hmm. See, he would be able to cause him. Oh, no, he's not active. Is within his printed movement rating of a friendly force that is under attack and both that leader and the hex under attack are within the command range of a leader holding a senior command the leader may attempt to make a reaction movement well he and that leader and the hex under attack are within the command range of a leader holding senior command so rosecrans is up here he is not within the two hexes of that guy. So, he's not going to be able, and the hex. So, you, they're not going to be able to react to that hex. Hmm. And both that leader and the hex under attack are within the command range of a leader holding. The leader may attempt to make a reaction movement. Active leaders in their combat units occupying entrenchments and the combat units comprising the cavalry corps may also attempt reaction movement without having to be in the command range of a leader holding a senior command. Attempting a reaction movement does not require an order per se, 
but orders may be required to merge the friendly defending forces or to substitute leader movement rate values. All right, so the leader attempting to reaction movement rolls one die and must roll less than or equal to his printed movement rating. So that's not going to happen. All right, well, so much for that. Say la vie. So we could get after. <laughs> so we could get after him, but this leader here, not Rosecrans, but the guy underneath him is Crittenden. Crittenden could, he could react, and that would overwhelm the Confederates. That would be too much for them to deal with. So that's probably a no-no. We can, however, well, you know what? We need to do some rolling here. So let's go. We're going to start with Mr. Hardy here. All right. We're going to start with Hardy. Does he want to pick those guys up? All right. So they're on the two table, which is over yonder. And he's got a movement rating of four. Now, the Confederates, they always get better odds. So let's roll. Where's my pretty? Dog? There it is. Uh, he rolls a two, so that's good. Uh, where's my chart? Where's my chart? All right, so he rolls a two, which is very good. No, actually, it's not. <laughs> All right, and let's see. Does he get anything? He could reduce it by a one. He could reduce it by a one. To a one if he wants to drop his morale level one. So he could move it to eight. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Damn, he can't get there. He cannot get there. Oh, no, he gets 12 if he does that. Oh. All right, so we're going to have Hardy reduce his morale by one. But is that, that's not considered a force march though. All right, so he's gonna reduce it by one. He is force, what I say? Force number four. So he's gonna reduce their morale to a two. All right, and he's gonna be able to move 12. So he's gonna go up here He's going to grab both the cavalry and that brigade. Now, you know what? He's going to grab that brigade. So he's going to go up to Treyune. He's going to go one, grab that brigade, which is an attachment. Okay. He's going to scoop him up. So that's one. And he's going to, he's got to burn an administrative point to do that. All right. So that's leader four. His administrative points now drop to three. Okay. So he's got four guns, so, all right. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then in here. And he's going to declare an attack. All right, he put that unit in there. So he's got two stars. That means he can command three divisions, and Confederates are in brigades, so he's only got seven brigades over there, and four brigades make up a division, so he's good. And I've knocked all my counters all over the place. All right, so he's going to go up there and declare an attack. And his battle rating is a five. Okay? And he rolls a one. So he is attacking. Boom. All right. We're not going to attack with him. So we'll get him out of there. And I'm just wondering if we can get Wheeler. What can we do with Wheeler? Wheeler should probably come over here and take this. We've also got Stevenson, who I have to roll to see if Stevenson ships off to the north. And I forgot what that was. I think it's a one, two. He stays. Let me check on that real quick. He 
because Stevenson, there's a special rule on him that he has to roll to see if he's going to stay in the area. Here it is. <clears throat> uh, Stevenson, okay, so turn on a roll of one, the player regains command and moves move Steven, Stevenson normally. On a roll of six, the appeals anger President Davis, who orders that Stevenson must immediately exit the map board, moving south. Darn it. Sent to the Mississippi. Fed player may attempt to secure change teams on a roll the die. Player may command on a roll of six. He doesn't. During the Confederate impulse on turn one and on subsequent turns by any die roll other than those just mentioned, Stevenson's division may only move in a westerly direction, keeping to the south of the Tennessee River. Well, that stinks. All right, so Stevenson's out of the, he's out of the picture. Okay, so we've got him over there, and he's declared a successful assault on Mr. Mr. Thomas here, who actually has a decent sized force. Yeah, he's got, what did I say, 14, he's got 26. He's got 26, and we've got uh, 10, 20, 30, we got 35 with him. All right, do we want to bring, no, he can't do that because this guy is a two-star leader, so they can't even be in the same hex. All right, so I think we want to get Wheeler out of there and get him back over here with this cavalry. All right, so let's do Wheeler. He's got a movement of four. He is all cavalry, so that makes him a cavalry corps. Yes. I think I've already got one of those placed though. Who do I have it on? I've got it on leader five. Is he leader five? No, he's leader three. Oh no, he might not be all cavalry. Let me make sure. Yeah, he is all cavalry. So he's gonna become all cavalry. Yep. All right. So he's gonna get a plus one or a minus one on his roll. All right, so he rolls. Oh, Jesus. That's a five. Oh, five. He's got a movement rating of four on the two chart. That's going to stink. Well, he only gets three. So he's going to move out. And I think, if I remember right, that is going to be... Where's my terrain chart? I keep hiding stuff from myself. So my terrain chart in the clear for normal movement point cost is two, unless you're force marching. So one, two, and then onto the road. Boy, he's not going to get over there. But well, you know what? They're going to get another turn. So, so that's three. All right, that cavalry force is fine right there. Um, man, do I even need to move him? Because I don't want to give them the straight shot down there. I can't do nothing with Stevenson. And what do I got down yonder? Oh, yes, I've got Joe Johnston. But Joe Johnston doesn't have anything with him. He's got leader number nine. I think all he's got is a detachment. Yeah, now he's got a scrub little three infantry down there, so he's going to stay put. And then way over yonder, I have McCown. Who is, McCown's got a nice, he's got some troops. It's a shame that he's not on a railroad. All right, so let's, um... I'm going to move McCown here to try to get him going that direction. I know you guys can't see this. I'm sorry. But you are going to see the fight right there. And we'll do that here as soon as I get everybody moved. Um, so let's take McCown. I'm going to see what else I can do during movement two. Those are the little odds and ends things that you have to go back and forth into the rule before just to make sure you know. I'm going to have to make myself a cheat sheet just on the things I can do because they didn't, it's not on the card. Oh yeah, yeah, darn if it ain't. <laughs> so you can do um, uh, force marches, you can declare attacks, create detachments, perform rail movement, capture, cavalry raids, scouting and screening, which we're not really doing any of that. You get attempting activation of inactive leaders from previous impulses 
You can activate engineers for assembly of bridges. You can perform naval movement. You can embark and disembark naval assault missions, and you adjust the AP and WB total costs for the actions. All right, so there's really not much they can do. All right, so let's move. Let's move. Um, haven't used any admin points yet. I haven't had to detach anybody yet. Did use the admin point to pick up that infantry unit there. So, man, he probably should have picked up that cav unit too. He could have used him. All right, anyhow, so let's go over here and let's move this guy. He is a movement rating of four. He rolls a three. Do -do 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 On a movement rating of four. Three's pretty good. Yeah, so he gets to move 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There we go. Ah, there we go. So the train hasn't moved yet. So the train can go over and pick those guys up on the next impulse. I don't know how far you can get with him. All right, so let's take Morgan and let's do what they were going to do with Morgan. So Morgan is a four. He is leader seven. He's I think he's also cavalry, isn't he? Yeah, he is. But I can only have two cavalry units. I think I've already got him spotted. Yeah. Darn it, that was a mistake. I should have put him as a cavalry corps. Yeah, crap. All right, so he gets a, he rolls a four. He's all cavalry. Um, no, that doesn't. Oh, they get one plus one movement point, though, for cavalry force. So he rolls a four as a four. That's, he gets six, so he's going to get seven. All right, so he's going to get seven. There is no forging in this game, so. Man. One, two, three, four, five. Nope. Yep, five, six, and seven. So he's on the move. We're taking Morgan up to see if we can't screw up the railroads. We're going to try anyhow. I, got, I want to cut that supply off. Well, shoot, they've got rail lines going out in different directions. So, But if I cut that one up there above Louisville... And then I could cut this one up out here in the south. That would be kind of cool. All right, so Morgan's moved. We got over here with Harry Heath. Harry Heath is over here. Um, and I've got Nathan Bedford Forrest. But well, Forrest is he is an awesome commander. So let's move Forrest. He's a five. And a five. Do I have him as a cavalry force? He's leader five. No, I do not. Got another boo-boo. All right, so Forrest is going to move. He's going to get plus one. So he rolls a five on the five. He's going to get six. He's going to get seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's headed up through Lexington. All right. What else do we got? What else do we got? What else do we got? I think we're going to flip since he's useless. I'm going to make Stevenson inactive. Make him inactive. We're going to make Joe Johnston inactive. Because I don't need to be wasting all those points. And what's Harry Heath? Harry Heath is over here is leader eight. What's he got? He's got a pretty good command over there, so... Let's put him into action. Put Harry Heath into action. He's got a four. And he's going to roll a four. All right, four and a four. He's going to get six. So he'll go one, two. Wait a minute, hold on. Let's see, sitting behind. You know, one, two, three. And he's gonna he's got Morgan who's inactive. He is going to hit Morgan, I think. Oh, uh, let's see, can he deal with him? Yeah, he, oh no. Morgan's got twelve strength points over there. That's not gonna 
What's Heath got? He's got 15. Um, one, two. Yeah, I know. Card laid, card played. Blah, 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 blah. I don't think so. I think we'll leave Heath inactive. I think we're going to make him inactive. We're not going to move him. All right. So I think that's really about it with the Confederates. Um, do I want to do something with Braxton here? Bragg has Polk with him. And Polk has Army Number 1, which is a pretty good force. And they will get another move. But there's no way I can get Bragg way over there. Bragg has a great movement value, that's for sure. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. He could go seven, eight into there if he gets he gets eight. So if Bragg reduces his morale, he can take off one. But he's got more leader, more than one leader in his force. Now let's leave Bragg in place. We'll leave him in place. All right, so pretty much all the movement we're going to do. That cavalry force right there is fine. Nobody's going to be able to move around him. Although that cavalry force might get a leader put on it. He could go out, out over here and help Wheeler. So let's um, let's move this one cavalry force here. So table two, they, they go as a one, and he rolls a five. So he's not. There's no leader, so he's not doing anything. All right. Yeah, that pretty much takes care of that. All right. So let's do this uh, combat over here. Now, no, he doesn't want to retreat. So let's bring the forces into play here. We've got leader four. Okay. Go get his troopies. Go get all his troops, bring them over here so we can see them. So you guys can see them. We've got seven brigades. All right. So he's got seven brigades. He's the only leader there. So here's the Confederate lineup. It's all their strengths. All right. And let's go get his leader three. She's got three divisions, so that's freaking, what, 12 brigades? Or nine, 12 or nine? All right, can we see all that stuff? Yeah, we can. All right, and they both got guns. Yeah, they do, they both do. All right, so, to use, I'm gonna mark her here. To use the guns, uh, where's my chart? Forging detachment. So, all right, so nobody's force marched. All right, what you do is you're going to figure out what each force has. So, we said the Confederates had what? 10, 20, 30. The Confederates have 35, all right? And Billy, Billy Yank has 14 and 12. He's got 26, okay? There's no odds differential it's just whatever numbers you bring to bear okay so they're they're gonna do their battle ratings I'm gonna get my book out all right all right, all right let's see so come see if we detonate mines <laughs> all right we know they're both in supply all right because yeah which by the way I think I was being harder on myself with supply rules and look away Unless there was a change, because it, you have 20 movement points to a major city that's on a rail line that leads back to your, or, or the, to a major city on, that's on a rail line leading off the map. So that was a no-brainer for everybody to be in supply. Um, let's see. Where's it at? Establish both sides supply, so as the combat factors, the die roll modifiers, and the FERC column shifts. And reduce ammo supply points. Okay, so ammo supply points. The commander has to supply the force with ammo, okay? Let's go in here. 
we'll go in here. All right. All right. All attacking and defending leaders engaged in a battle who hold commands with guns assigned to them must expend one ammo supply point each time they wish to use the guns in combat before the die is rolled. All right. So both the Confederates, there's one leader in each stack. They both have, let's see, four guns. Yes, they do. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So they're both going to get, a, they're going to get die rolls. They're going to get plus four to their die rolls, okay? So they have to burn a supply point. And they have five. So he's down to four. And this unit has four, so he's down to three. All right. <clears throat> they both currently have morales of two. So that's gonna that's not gonna do nothing. <clears throat> Alright. Alright, see here. Leaders without guns directly signed and do not expend uh, ammo supply points. But the presence of ammo supply points will affect the command's combat factors below. In addition, the OC of each force must expend one additional attack supply point to supply his entire force above the one ASP cost for using the guns assigned to him. So the attacking force is the Confederates. So he's got to burn an additional supply point. So now he's down to two. All right, so McCook had to burn one, or Thomas. Thomas had to burn one for to use his four cannons. Um... Hardy had to, or yeah, Hardy had to burn one to use his four cannons. Plus, he had to burn one because he's the attacker. All right. So we've lost two, three, three supply points there. Okay. It's not in a multiple attack. Leaders who have ASPs, but okay. So if you have attack supply points, but you wish to conserve them, you may choose not to expend any. In this case, they may not fire their guns, but their combat units may still use all of their combat factors. All right, well, we don't have any of that. Our modifiers. Inactive leader, no. Well, there would have been up there if I'd have done that attack. There's no for inactive leader. Okay. Uh, no force march. We did the ammo supply status. Our column shifts. Morale superiority. At the instance of combat, each player states the current morale level of the OC. Well, they're both at two. Okay. Um, the side with the higher morale level gets a bonus of one column shift to the right. In resolving combat in multiple attack battles compare each set so if if i had left a wheeler up in here to attack it would have been it would have been a separate attack you would have to figure it out separately so in his morale wheeler's morale i think is still at three so he would have got a column shift on that but there aren't any all right terrain terrain shifts okay so now this applies to both so the union is in the clear Okay, so the Confederates will get no shift. The Confederates are also in the clear, and they will get no shift. Other train hex, there's no column shifts for anybody. Okay, easy enough. All right, uh, no doctor, I'm not playing with that. All right, leader battle ratings. Okay, so of the force. The OC of the force may use his battle rating, okay? As additions to the die roll whenever he engages combat, even if he force marched his impulse or is currently as spied. Do not add the battle ratings of any subordinate leaders, okay? If the OC, okay. Okay, the OC of the force may use his battle rating as additions to the die roll whenever he engages in combat. All right, so... He's got a five, so the Union's going to get a plus five. And the Confederates are also, they have a battle rating of five. That fortunately, there's only one leader here, so he's going to get plus five. So we're already at plus nine on the die rolls. All right. Cavalry superiority. I don't think either one of them have it. Neither one of them have cavalry in there. So that's not even going to apply. And all the attacking forces total. Okay. So that's not going to be. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Stanley. Stanley could have done reaction movement. Let me make sure. <clears throat> Reaction.
action movement. Let me check this out again. Units comprising the Cavalry Corps may also attempt their action movement without having to be in command range of a leader holding a senior command. Attempting a reaction movement does not require an order, but orders may be required to merge the friendly defending forces or substitute the leader MR values. So, but he can't go in there because there's no headquarters in there. So, okay. So what he does is a leader using reaction movement may enter impassable terrain or cross major hex at the bridge of Otherwise, the leader may ignore normal terrain calls and simply move the number of hexes that a leader must end reaction movement when he enters any enemy, any hex in the enemy zone of control, including hex already occupied by friendly combat units. A leader using reaction movement to merge with friendly combat units must be able to fit within the command structure. Okay, so you can't do that. Because they are the same rank leader, there's no headquarters, uh, no army headquarters in that hex with uh, Thomas. So Stanley cannot move in there with him because he's a leader of the same rank. Uh, let's see. There may not be more than one leader of each rank in a hex without the presence of the headquarters, which is what I just said. Da 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 da. To those in the okay. Reacting force reaches the hex under attack and can be successfully attached. It joins the defense of the hex and contributes all escape. Okay, if the reacting force cannot reach the hex under attack but can move adjacent to it, uh, or if it can fit in the command structure of the force under attack and so must end its move adjacent to it, the reacting force can only be used in a support role, okay? So support role, if a leader using reaction movement cannot reach the, ax, the hex action under attack, he may still contribute to the battle if he can reach a support position. A support position is any hex that is adjacent to both the enemy and the attacker, uh, the, both him and the attacking force, the, the friendly and the attacking force, and the hex under attack containing the defending force, okay, even if separated by an unbridged or unfordable major river. All friendly combat units occupying a support position may provide support, including depots, engineer brigades, etc. Units occupying a support position may add one half of their combat factors and guns to the strength of the forces in the hex under attack. All right. So he could move in there. I just did that again, didn't I? Close the book. Don't do that. Yeah, this rule book for this game here was this one wasn't put together very well, sorry to say. I need to get the one from Look Away. I think I, think I actually I copied it and made it into a more easily handleable PDF. And it looks to me like everything's the same, so. All right, so he could get there. And he would have cavalry superiority if he was. So that would sort of jack things. I mean, then there's one more surprise rule at the end of all the determination, too, about these modifiers, die roll modifiers. All right, so if he rolls less than his movement rating, right? he didn't. He rolled a six. I was going to move Stanley down here because he's cavalry, and he didn't. He rolled a. That's twice he's rolled a six to do something. All right, so he's not going into the fight. Yeah, that sucked. All right, so that's over with. All right, so none of that. Broken unit morale. Nope. Bad weather, offered in the rain or mud. Nope, 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 nope. They're in a blizzard. Nope. All right, the scenario offset rule is plus six to the DRM. Ain't that something? They both get plus six, and this is to show balance to the fighting during this time. And let me tell you something. That plus six is going to be killer. Where's that? All right, the die roll, Stones River. All right, the scenario for offset is plus six. And let me read that to you because this is, I don't remember seeing this in the look away ones. 
These games are becoming really, really interesting. I'm going to have to play more of these things. All right, here we go. Uh, what was that? Darn it, I was just reading it. Oh. Notations, notations, notations. Oh, come on. Oh, that's right. It's not in those. It's in um, special rules. Special rules. Naval. Special rules for cavalry. Come on, Jeffrey. Well, I can't. I'm going to find it. So, no. Oh, yeah, the fert also. The fert is designed to reflect the effects of large, well-armed armies with full artillery parks. Early on, both sides employed smaller forces armed with a variety of secondhand weapons and cannons. To model historical losses, scenarios employ a FERT offset die roll modifier of plus three to plus eight. The FERT offset is always in addition to any other die roll modifiers a side may claim. Both players may claim the cert scenario FERT offset bonus when rolling on the FERT. All right. That's like the Southern way of saying Fort, ain't it? All right. So the deal is, okay, so let's get our chart. I'm going to go over here see it. I'll put it out here. You know, I doubt you can see it. We're used, that's the chart from Look Away. And no, you cannot see it. All right. So, anyhow, just so we'll do this here. So, up top here, turn aside with then you can see it. Along the top row, those are your strengths, okay? And down this row, here's your modifiers. And then you have your results. So, both, both sides roll a D6, and then you find the column. And that's the damage they inflict on the enemy, all right? So the Confederates are rolling on 35. They'll probably get some, I don't think, there's no column shift modifier. So the Confederates will be rolling here. And the Yanks have, what I say, 26. So the Yanks will be rolling one down, all right? So those two columns right there. And with all these stinking modifiers. All right, so the Defenders and the Attackers. The Defenders always take their results first. Let's roll one of each. One of each. We'll do. I don't have any blue dice. Got my new six sided here. I don't have any blue ones. Let's get a red and a black. Black will be the evening. All right. So Johnny Reb rolls a four plus nine and six plus 15. Jesus. So he gets a. When I say a 4 plus 15, he rolls a 19. And believe it or not, that did not go all the way down the chart. So he affects a 2R4 on the Yanks. The Yanks rolled a 4, and they also got plus 15. So they got 19 on their chart. And they got a 2R3 on the Confederates. But I did not check for morale column shifts here. Yeah, I did. Second, subsequent tracks, terrain effects, no... No entrenchments, no cav superiority, plus one per gun. Battle rating, no woods. Oh, you've got a woods check thing here too. So, because there was actually woods everywhere and the, the, the distance of the hexes were so large, you would roll a dice and it, was a, it would be a die roll modifier. So if you rolled a, well, that dice is screwed up. I just got these two in the mail. Huh. Like the other ones like that. Nope. Alright. So if you roll just that one is. It bothers me. I just got these today. Alright, so if you roll so if you do a woods check for every battle, if you roll the dice and you roll a five, a four or a five, you're gonna take minus one off the die roll. All right. Um, for attacking an enemy in, in the woods. Okay. That, that's what I'm saying. If you roll a six, you're going to take two off your dice roll. So I didn't do that on this one here. They're both in the clear, but that's what it says to do. That's to cover everything because there might be trees in every one. So in reality, one side would have not, the other side would have. 
but we're gonna we're gonna so just remember that when you go into combat that's like a, just a I don't quite think it's optional because it's on here but you roll for a woods check not because you don't have woods in the terrain they say that everything has the potential on the map to have woods in it okay so that's why you would roll to see if there was any woods in the hex you were in and it's just a, it's just a simple four five or six you're going to lose some die roll modifiers uh one two and three you're not but i'm just going to simulate that nobody did all right so let's get our results applied so the defenders get theirs applied and they got a what i say a 2r4 okay so on a natural roll of one uh results in a possible gun loss and on a natural roll of six results in a possible leader loss. So both of them rolled four, so there's no gun loss, there's no leader loss. All right, so the first number is the step losses inflicted on the opponent. The R in the second number is the number of hexes that opponent must retreat. Uh, and if you get an M result, the enemy overall commander must make a post-combat morale check. Well, we did not get an M result. So he is going to take two losses, Mr. Thomas is. All right, and he's going to retreat back up the road. I just realized I can't pull them forces back together again until Rosecrans is with them. So, yeah, so maybe this idea wasn't very good. All right, so he's going to take two step losses. Let's dwindle him down first. Uh, you know what? Let me make sure I'm not doing that wrong because I know some of these games are specific. All right, resolution, step losses. Only combat units. Suffer step losses, all right? All right, the owning player... Oh, yeah, I forgot. This has a weird rule. So the owning player uh, chooses which combat unit loses a step for all unnumbered losses. All right, so he gets to choose the first loss for himself since he's lost two. So he's going to choose that smaller unit, and he's going to reduce him. The enemy player gets to choose the even number loss. So, yeah, naturally, he's going to take that 12 down to a 6, Right? So he's either going to lose five with him or he's going to lose six. So he's, he's going to take it off of this guy right here. All right. And the same thing works the way the other way. But you cannot eliminate combat units until all the other friendly combat units have taken step losses. All right. So he got a two R four and he's got to retreat four hexes. So I'm going to go put his little troopies back over here in their box. All right. Back over yonder. <clears throat> All right. And we're going to move, move him back here for one, two, three, and four. So he's going all the way back. One, two, three, four. Back towards Mr. Rosecrans. All right. And the Confederates get a two or three. So he gets to choose the first one. Well, all of his are fives. So he'll take one of these scrubby dudes and flip them. And he's going to take one of the five twos. The Union will choose one of the five twos and flip him. And he's got to retreat three. So one, two, three. He goes right back to another town called, oh, it's Columbia. Okay. All right, let's put all his troopies back over. All right, so it's kind of works in favor of the Confederates because they're only brigades. Whereas the Union is in divisions. Those are quite the advantage. All right. So you just saw combat. Let's get this erased off of here. It's pretty simple. The combat, it's just the, 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 you're just checking a lot of stuff. That's all you're doing. It's really, it's really not that hard to figure it out. Um, just checking the modifiers. You get a little odds and ends stuff you got to look for. All right, so that takes care of the combat sequence, and then you go to the war effort, which I forgot to do that for the Union. We'll do that now. Um, nobody has an own use marker on the board where they've done supply thing yet, because that won't happen until the end of this turn. So at the end of the war effort of the Union, I should have done that earlier, he had one... One, two, three, four, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He had seven, and one over here, he had eight active leaders. So he's got to come down eight points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he's down to 68 points, war effort points. All right. That was on the end of his. So the Confederates, at the end of their impulse, uh, or have the leader go inactive. Yes, yeah, so you can flip leaders inactive. Um, or, it says here, or flip the leaders, or have a leader go inactive. Oh, so you could have done that. I could have done that at the end. I can't let him go inactive. And I need to move him farther out, so I'm not going to do that. Um, Stevenson already is. I don't want Nathan Bedford Forrest to go inactive, and I don't want John Hunt Morgan to go inactive. Um, I can make this guy here go inactive, but I don't think I want to. I think I want to get him up to the fight. And Johnston, I think, already is. Yeah, Johnston already is. I don't think they have any leaders over here. Polk, but I can't. I'm not going to make him go inactive. Uh, so they've got one, two, three, four. Get that off of there. Five, six, seven, eight. So the Confederates lose eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they're down to 67. They started with 72. Uh, yeah, y'all can't see. Well, you saw them in the other video. So, all right. Now there would be one more impulse, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to stop this right here because you got a chance to see what a combat look like. Um, and I've already I can already talk, I've gotten better at this, so I'm going to stop this one right here. I've got another Confederate impulse to do, and then I'm going to do the reorganization stuff, the administrative stuff at the end, and then I'll film after that too, so you can see the whole picture. All right, talk to y'all soon.